Professor Giuseppe Marano, which is called the Beppe for Friends, is full professor of structural design at the Politecnico di Torino, where he is also vice director of the Department of Structural Environment and Ge Geotechnical Engineering. His research interests deal with structural optimization from finding and structural health monitoring. Today, we will have the pleasure to listen to his lecture on the state of the art and future challenges in evolutive algorithms for structural optimization. Welcome, Beppe. The screen is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for your nice presentation. So, okay, thank you very much to all the attenders of to this uh, very interesting and successful uh, workshop. I would like to thank specifically uh, the three colleagues that organized this, uh, this uh, workshop. So, the, the Fred Francesco Marmo, um, Amedeo, and uh, uh, Professor, um, uh, sorry, um, Stefano Gabriele. Yeah, and Stefano, yeah, Stefano Gabriele and Andrea Vicoletti, sorry. Okay. Uh, for their uh, very nice invitation to attend a, a keynote on the topic. Uh, I, I, I just um, uh, defined the topic of this keynote as uh, many of us typically use some algorithms for structural optimization that sometimes are um, inside our code that we are used to adopt for uh, performing the, uh, the the results we uh, we need in terms of uh, design structures. But uh, well, in my personal opinion, we are in the middle of a, a, a new revolution in the, in the structural design, as um, as happened about 40 years ago when the, the oh. finite element uh, approach improved uh, dramatically the capacity uh, to discover and to analyze and uh, to analyze the uh, structure um, response. Um, now we have a, a new kind of revolution in terms of new algorithms that uh, coupled with the uh, large capacity in, in computational tools that the modern uh, computer uh, has. Um, well, that helps us uh, very much in, in, uh, in a better design. This better design is commonly called structure optimization. That means um, to, uh, to obtain uh, greater results from uh, uh, in, in design in terms of having more uh, efficient structures and at the same time also cheaper, okay? And well, the, stru the structure of my presentation is about a, a very first overview of structure optimization um, concepts and what are the main computational tools that now helps us to uh, uh, to perform this this field, so the structure optimization. What is the main characteristic uh, of the evolutive algorithms and why they are uh, so efficient in this field? And finally, some final consideration about fa uh, future challenging in structure optimization, uh, not only from the academic point of view, but mainly as a, a realistic uh, new approach in standard design. Okay. Well, the, the, as, as, as usual, I have to introduce what does it mean uh, optimization. And uh, well, there are a, a, a huge possible definition of optimization. I, I like very much this one the, uh, to, that, may, that simply is uh, to, to do the best with the time and the resources that we have. And why it is so important of optimizing okay, uh, in the design of larger spatial structures? Well, mainly because uh, we are able to obtain some more efficient structural systems. And that means not, not simply uh, just to reduce the use of materials. It is a false, a false goal. The main goal for large, uh, and, and, uh, for large structures is to reduce the cost connected with the construction and sometimes with the possibility itself to realize such structures. Okay? And typically, looking at the past, 
it is not very easy to we now we have a, a, a huge number of, of uh, tools for the analysis of the structure so we are really efficient in in, uh, in evaluate in a very detailed way the, uh, the the structural response to external loads and to all the loads condition we can uh, suppose but uh, different task it is a uh, more complex uh, also more more, more computational uh, intensive um, optimized so to find the best shape best structure of the organization is still a, 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 an open questions and uh, for many in many cases it is still now uh, um, more an art than a technique uh, to uh, the, the conceptual uh, design of a structure that is at the same time the, the early stage of the, the, of the design process, but is, in my opinion, one of the most important one as we get uh, the, the basic definitions and the basic assumptions at this stage. So while well, learning from the past, we sure, uh, all of us are able to recognize, well, the uh that such structures are in some sense optimized but not in a, in a modern way but in any case uh it is the maximum uh effort from the structural point of view that we can reach from these stone uh arches for instance but this is still the what we happen our our conceptually father uh Eugene Erwin, uh, and the other colleagues that uh, um, lived in the in the in the last century, uh, just few decades before the revolution of the finite element analysis, uh, the conceptual design are still uh, was uh, for sure uh, related to a conceptual idea. So um, just the a, a right feeling to uh, have the, um, the, the, the capacity to predict uh, with the, an intuitive uh, approach the, the structural response and so to get the, uh, in the right way, uh, to use in the right way the material. But well, what is now this, uh, what is the, the future of this, uh, of this area? Well, it is, uh, um, uh, not limited just to the uh, magister uh, of uh, structural design, but we can implement in a more uh, uh, efficient way, uh, mixing together a modern instrument for design. In this case, I just show uh, the increase optimization, uh, just using a, a standard code mixed with optimizer tools. And what is the, the steps for, for optimizing? Well, the first one is for sure to have in a very clear goal. So to minimize something or to maximize the efficiency or something else, okay? Then from once we have a goal, we can define the objective and in terms of cost of constructions, but could be something else. Then we have to properly define or choose the tools that we have to use. And then we have to implement to run the, uh, the, the optimizations and ensure so it's common. Uh, the first result is not the, what we, uh, if it is not what we are looking for, we have to upgrade and so um, uh, match in a, in a better way the, the optimization. From the mathematical point of view, from the mathematical point of view, the optimization uh, structural um, uh, structural design is nothing else than a structure a, a common uh, constraint optimization problem when we define an objective function that is related with the goal that we would like to obtain. A number you can see here in uh, in the with the yellow uh, <clears throat> with, the, with the yellow circle and uh, um, uh, a number of constraints that could be equality or, or disequality and they are typically related to the success in, in, uh, in structure efficiency and we have to design uh, a, a list of parameters able to describe the optimization we have to deal 
that means the, the same vector that is uh, limited in a hyperrectangle. So we define a, a minimum and a maximum value for each of them. And the tools, tools is, is quite important because the mathematical approach could be done by classical. This problem has been studied in the past for, 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 for centuries from classical approach, but they simply uh, fail to, uh, for, uh, for, to be ready in, in, uh, in, uh, in structural design or non classical one, like the, uh, as, as I told you, uh, is the, uh, the evolutionary uh, uh, problems. The, in, I would like to show you the um, uh, very common slide describing what kind of possible approach in structural design we can have. We can just uh, optimize the sizing of the structures once we uh, fix the, the geometry. We can optimize more than size also the shape. So we can move a geometry in a class of, of, of uh, possible geometries that we define. Or topology, that means we, well, from, we, we, we change the connectivity of each elements. Okay. And going from the left to the right, we increase the complexity uh, also because it's easy to understand. We increase the number of design parameters, but oh, we also increase the performance so we can reach um, higher performance. So better solution, better solutions uh, with topology optimization than with the shape and the sizing. In the past, uh, as I told you, we have had a, a, a number of mathematicians uh, or physicians that uh, spend a, a large part of their works in, in, uh, in solving such problems. But unfortunately, uh, they, um, the, the classical tools are not able to, to solve this problem as we have a, a number of, of problems uh maybe because we have limited knowledge of uh, the, of the objective function or the uh, we have no derivative information and uh, maybe this continuity we can have some noisy uh, or evaluating the objective function is very expensive and so on okay and the research space is high dimensional so that uh, about 30 years ago uh, the research in uh, in uh, standard uh, approaches uh, practically stopped but but we and, uh, and so uh, for many years, the, the standard approach from practical design uh, uh, was to uh, use the uh, sensitivity of the designers uh, using the intuition, the examples, mathematical elaboration, the experience and the, the physical sense, for instance, just to cite some of possible approach. But well, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the beginning of the 70s, a, a new class of uh, algorithms uh, has been developed. Uh, typically, they are called as soft computing, that may be uh, uh, a, a, a quite crude uh, definition of, of this branch. But uh, finally, the all the uh, new applications in uh, uh, artificial intelligence are uh, mainly based on uh, neural networks or uh, or the uh, evolutive or genetic algorithms. The um, as genetic algorithms was the first uh, algorithm uh, developed in the uh, evolutive um, group of algorithms. Uh, sometimes they are all grouped as genetic algorithms. Okay. And uh, what is the, 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 the main ba the, the, the basic uh, formulation of the process and why they are so-called uh, soft computing? As we, we just try uh, um, to generate a random population and then we evolve this population, um, trying to increase the efficiency. So the research of the best solution uh, by mixing together the information to making the, the best use of all pieces of information that uh, uh, all the um, random uh, uh, trials uh, obtain. Okay, and so this is an iterative uh, process that uh, increase the efficiency uh, step by step or generation by generation. And uh, 
And nowadays, I just cite some of the uh, uh, classification, some of the, of the, of the um, kind of algorithms that are uh, in these fields so on the evolutive algorithms. The genetic algorithms was the first one, but we have uh, particles go optimization, ant colony uh, optimization, and so on. There are some of them, and uh, many, many others are, 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 pre are presented. And the, the, the main idea of the first, uh, of the first uh, uh, algorithm, the genetic algorithm, that was developed uh, by Holland at the mid of the 70s, was to, uh, starting from a random number of individuals, uh, so a possible solution in the, uh, generated in the, in, the, in the entire research space, uh, to do a reproduction, a reproduction, so to mixing together some information of the uh, solutions that we have, doing a competition that means surviving the best solution and then doing a selection. And so doing it uh, iteratively. Well, this is not a crazy way to solve a problem that uh, otherwise from a classical mathematical point of view is, is very complex, but uh, uh, it's just an imitation of what we have seen in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the nature as the evolution of the species uh that uh, uh, generation by generation increase the its uh, uh its efficiency i mean uh, the capacity to be able to um get as much as possible from the environment okay and so uh, learning from uh, biology the concept is that if we have two possible solutions that here are commonly known as father and mother uh, the, the the their child has uh, as a mix of their uh, own uh, genetic um, uh, characteristics uh, with some uh, variations, okay? And so the, the, the steps is, is this one. So we start from its population, then we evaluate the fitness evaluation. So in terms of, uh, of uh, structures, uh, if it reach as much as possible, uh, the, the minimizing objective that I have without uh, uh, failing to the constraints. And then we get, we select the best, uh, so the best parent. Uh, and then we do a, an evolution, that means a crossover and mutation, uh, obtain some offspring, some child, and then we select the best between the past population and the offsprings. And then the, the, the process starts again. The main uh, characteristic of these uh, algorithms is that they have two two main steps: an exploration and then exploitation. Exploration is the capacity to explore the entire research space to well to to have an idea where where what are the optimal uh, areas where uh, promising for an optimal minimum. And exploitation is to uh, just work in that area to uh, uh, refine the solution to get the, the, the optimal solution, okay? Uh, this is a, a simple scheme of what is, uh, you can see this is this population, I just select the best one, then I mix together the, um, the parameters of the best solutions, then I do some mutation like uh, we have in biology, and then I, I select and I have a, again uh, a new population with the same size, but with, with a better uh, individuals. And this, this, this process has been, uh, is, is typically to um, uh, iteratively. Well, in, in structural optimization, we have uh, one main uh, uh, aspect that typically we, um, we have uh, real or uh, discrete um, parameters. So real parameters are typically related to the geometry and uh, uh, discrete are related to some constructive, constructive aspects just to, uh, to do something if we have to design a, a steel bridge we have to select properly uh, the, 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 the beams profile just from a list we can do uh, the, the beam we, we would like to, to without any uh, any restriction. So we have a list, and uh, uh, this means that we have a, a, a not a continuous variable, but we have to um, to, to draw to to represent as a binary with, with a binary alphabet. 
those are some just to show you some of the main com some of the common uh, um, formulation for uh, obtaining from the parents uh, you can see here p1 and p2 are the two parents and o1 and o2 are the two offsprings the ch child okay so this is just some of the uh, possible way to uh, mix together the information about the parents inside the the offsprings okay and you can see that in some way there is some random approaches and some conceptual approaches that they have uh, they take into account all the uh, information all the pieces of information that came from the parents uh, this is the uh, description of what is the uh, mutation of operators uh, for just modify the offsprings that here are defined as b i uh, to a new one that has something different from the original just uh, uh, obtained from the, uh, the crossover and finally, the stopping criteria that is still a, a, an open question. Typically, we can uh, define a stop criteria when we have um, we have reached the maximum number of iterations, or when we have um, uh, no improvement after a number of, of generations in the optimal solution, and so on. And moreover, the, uh, the as I described you, uh, one main part, one main advantage is also in the future is that the genetic algorithms and in general all the evolutive algorithms can be implemented using a parallel computing. So we can also divide it in in, in subpopulations. Uh, we have not to uh, have a single population, but a number of different populations, and this could increase strongly the uh, exploration stage. Okay, we can also improve the typical improvement of the uh, Genetic algorithms is the varying the population size. So when we are still uh, doing a research, and if we see that we have no uh, good solution uh, by hand, uh, we are not improving the, the, the result. We can vary the population size, we can increase, or we can vary the data length, or we can reduce the search space when we have identified uh, the, the, the more promising areas uh, in the research space where to uh find the, the 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 optimal solution and just to show you the efficiency this is just uh, there is a a, a a group of colleagues uh jack of genetic and the voting computational conference that every year do a competition you can see here in uh, some uh, uh, nightmare of the objective uh, objective function like this one where no classical uh, approach can be used you can see that uh, how fastly the, the standard or modified genetic algorithm can reach the, the final solutions. There are a number of test functions that uh, is in the community that were to test uh, such algorithms. At the same time, a, a, a one of the most uh, interesting uh, uh, evolution of the genetic algorithm was the particle law optimization that uh, uh, starts from the observation of what happens in, in, in a group of animals, so like uh, uh, birds or fish. And uh, in this case, uh, this is also not related to any um, mathematical information uh, of, the, uh, of the objective function, but it's a, a iterative research stage. Uh, this has been developed in the, in the middle of the 19s by two uh, colleagues working in the ecology uh, field, and they, they develop a, a sort of model of what happens in, in, uh, in a biological uh, community. So uh, each element of the, of the, of the uh, each element of the group has its own uh, velocity and position. And so it, the, the position is upgraded step by step by taking into account two different, uh, uh, two different uh, aspects. Uh, one is related to the uh, global or social um, uh, capacity to uh, identify the, the, the optimal solution. One is related to the uh, personal uh, knowledge of the of the capacity to get or to have uh, some information about the optimal solution. Well, what is this 
located. So, well, very briefly, each element of this uh, group of birds uh, start from a position, and this position is upgraded by taking into account two different uh, aspects, one cognitive term and one uh, social term. Cognitive term is related to the uh, personal experience, and one is related to the uh, global um, capacity of the entire uh, uh, population to have some better information. So they, they are mixed together to just to give a, a, a new position of the point, and this this is uh, and this is updated step by step. One very promising, uh, and I think it will be uh, an exceptional tool for for the future. <clears throat> Evolutive algorithms is the estimation of this distribution algorithm that different from all the other methods where we do in any case a selection. So we lost in some way uh, some pieces of information about the, the during the iterations. Uh, in this case, it's, it is based on the um, on the, the concept that the, 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 the new generation is not random one, but is based on a, a probabilistic density function that uh, um, uh, is describe uh, the, the, the possibility to get the optimal uh, solution. That uh, initially it's uniform, but after uh, but it's up, up, uh, upgraded. Uh, step by step, considering all the population that we are uh, producing, um, by um, by taking into account this this information, so the the initial the initial um, uh, probability function is, is is uniform. But then we update, and uh, every time we do a generation that is more uh, more able to uh, reach the optimal solution. And well, what are the now the state of the art of how to use in practical problems? Well, uh, we are in last I, I think no more than five or ten years. Uh, we have a number of uh, very simply uh, simply tools. Uh, I mean, simply not only from the uh, conceptual point of view, but also from the practical point of view. So, uh, in my mind, technology is, is, is smart, not only if it is cheap or, um, or simply uh, or not complex, but when it is uh, very easy to be used at practical level of, of, of view. So uh, we can, we now are having a, a number of uh, simply tools that could be uh, adopted in, uh, in uh, using some design program, general, general design program, like in this case in Grasshopper, but uh, the, as this is an, um, um, a, 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 an open uh, tools, when it is very very easy, you are not to, a, anymore to write down codes, but you have just to connect the different boxes. Each of one has to do its own um, uh, process, and you can have some. Uh, well, you can see here some. Uh, you can reach some very interesting uh, solutions. Um, Mixing together structural, geometrical, maybe also other uh, other uh, important uh, aspects. And uh, this is, for instance, some results obtained at the, the practical stage of design. In this case, for um, very high tall buildings. Okay, just considering also the uh, the wind acting. And uh, the, now we are able to optimize also in. So to have an, uh, so in uh, some sense, an optimal solution, just considering a very complex phenomenon like the wind. So changing the shape of a, of a, of a, of a building to minimize the effect of the wind on uh, uh, acting on uh, acting on it. And now I'm going finally to, to the to the cushions. Uh, well, uh, we can still do something about this, the algorithm efficiency. That means uh, make more efficient in sense to reduce the uh, objective function evaluation. This means that we have to, um, and this is a, a key point for structural optimization, especially for very complex structures. So uh, developing new uh, approaches, uh, modifying them to make more uh, efficient in sense of reducing the cost 
and uh, uh, also using a proper description of the design vector. So instead of uh, having a high number of design vectors, especially for geometry, but to define them, define the geometry with the um, parametric functions able to uh, reduce as much as possible the number of uh, the same vectors elements so dimension and in this case also this, this the dimension of the research space uh, integrating with the uh, finite element modern commercial codes uh, so strongly uh, incrementing the interoperability now it is uh, for sure done by large companies working in design but i am sure that the simplicity of evolutive algorithm could be used in, in, in the future also by standard practitioners okay and parametric design parametric design it means i would like to in the first stage of the design when i have the uh, white piece of paper when i draw down the the first lines so the i have to fix what are the uh, the possible solution i have to uh, reach during my design and uh, doing this by uh, very easy um, uh, codes uh, able to get some information about uh, all the aspects at uh, a very simplified uh, level could help uh, in, in a very high way uh, the, the capacity of, of getting an optimal solution in this case the use of uh, uh, so efficient algorithms like evolutive algorithms is a key point uh, to reach these uh, results. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Professor Marano. Uh, very interesting presentation. Do you have any, any uh, suggestion on how to choose the proper algorithm? If you have a problem, what, what are the kind of things that we have to look into the problem in order to choose, let's say, one specific um, genetic algorithm to solve it, or if we can uh, go with traditional algorithms? Well, this is a good question. I have no uh, <laughs> a final, uh, final reply. Okay, so um, uh, typically depends on what kind of problem. So dimension is, is quite important. So dimension of the problem is quite important. The, the quality of the constraints as typically, no, typically it's for every structural problem, we uh, problems we have to obtain a constraint solution. Okay, and so the, the quality means the the complexity of the of the constraints. Um, well, the um, I think that one key point is not just on right on the efficiency, but on the simplicity to be used of an algorithm. Okay. So we have different algorithms with different level of complexity. We can uh, improve as, as much as possible, but as they are random, we have no a uh, single possible solution. I, I didn't uh, tell you, but uh, we typically obtain a, not a, a global optimum, but sub-optimal point that is uh, uh, not the, the best solution we can have, that is a mathematical goal, but from the design point of view, from the engineering point of view, uh, I need uh, not the best solution, but a, a, a very good solution. Okay, so uh, many times optimization means, give me some suggestions, a, a support in decision at the early stage, so what I can do. I have to be uh, honest, the last algorithm I show you is very promising as it is able not to lose any pieces of information from the past. But it is really early and never used in, in, in structure optimization. So I am studying just now if it is able to increase the, uh, the, the, the capacity. Moreover, there are some specific algorithms, for instance, in, in, in uh, dealing with multi-objective optimization, where, well, typically um, the, the standard is genetic algorithms that is the more efficient way to, to reach uh, the Pareto front, uh, both in unconstrained and unconstrained uh, solutions. Uh, they are well um, defined and they have, there is a, a big literature uh, 
So sometimes it's better to use an algorithm that I, I know how, how it works instead to try with a, um, an algorithm with, that I don't know exactly what, what it, uh, it do when there are a, a huge number of parameters to be tuned uh, for, for running it in a proper way. Okay, thank you again.